This video is a vloggy sort of follow-up to the update on our move from last fall. With the tendonitis problems, I figured I really didn't need a big shop to tempt me to do workshop projects. So at some point last fall, I just put setting things up in the big basement room on hold and focus on other stuff, like re-editing some of my older videos and building stuff out of Legos. I used Lego to build another mouse experiment, and that video did quite well. I was going to do another video on that, but uh, the mouse just hasn't come back, so I think I have to wait for spring for another mouse to show up. I also played around with uh, building other contraptions out of Lego, like my pantograph and my machine catapult, and both of those videos did quite well. And I've got a few more other ideas for building out of Legos. I hope to get back to those eventually. Emailing with Mac Sheldon, who sells the pantographs in the US, he wanted me to come up with some kind of plan that involved some compound mitered mortise and tenon joints to show off the abilities of the uh, tilting table on the pantry router. So I designed a three-legged stool which involved some interesting angles in the joinery. But uh, to me, no plan is complete unless I've validated it by actually building it. And this was a uh, small enough project I figured I'd just tackle it for the time being. Although first I had to find all the bits for the pantry router and put things back together. And the video for that did quite well and it didn't cause too much pain in my arms. So that gave me some motivation to organize more workshop stuff again. I cleared out the corner where I figured I'd put most of my tools and I put up a few extra lights and that made that big basement room look that much more appealing. This was just unfinished drywall and I figured I would put a coat of paint on it just to give it a lighter color and then I thought Maybe I'll just smear a little bit of drywall mud into the gaps just to make that gap less obvious without doing a proper mudding job. And then I thought maybe I should cover the screw holes too, but uh, I didn't tape it and I certainly didn't mud it to fill that sort of a dip where the sheets join. You're meant to put tape and mud in there to bring that up to level to really hide the joints. I'm just trying to make it a bit lighter color so it looks better as a background. But now that I've got a layer of primer on here, some of these imperfections have become uh, more glaring. So I think I'll uh, put a little bit more mud on there before I paint it. Now that I've got the uh, final paint on it, it looks uh, pretty decent, at least from a distance and certainly through the camera. Um, you can, of course, uh, see the seams if you look at it from a low angle, especially if the lighting was at a low angle. But my main goal really was to just make it not look uh, jarringly bad in the background for uh, making videos. So. Uh, I call that a success. I already had the belt sanders on this workbench and I just levered it up to some dollies and that way I could roll it out of the way and then into the new place without having to lift the sanders or the workbench. And the reason I wanted this workbench there is so I could still open that big drawer on the end which I could never use in my big garage workshop. And these are the drawers that used to be in my lathe stand, but uh, I don't have that big lathe anymore, nor the stand. And I turned the drawers that used to be under this workbench into a separate workbench in the other room. And now the dust collectors for my sanders, but it turns out that corner is a little bit too tight and I had to move the workbench just a little bit just to make room for it. I was just going to put the dust collector for the strip sander in place, but uh, I actually took the blower off of it for the move six months ago. And I thought before I wedge it in there, I should check if it needs emptying. And there is actually a, a fair bit of dust, so I should clear it out. Got my two sanders and dust collectors set up now, though it was awkward because this one's got the dust port on the right, and I couldn't run the hose down the front because there's a drawer here, nor through the workbench top because of the drawers in the workbench, so I had to run the hose all the way here to the dust collector, which the corner is a perfect place for because it's kind of hard to get to, so I can't put much else in there. And then for this one, the dust port is actually on this side, but that was getting really awkward running the hose all the way around. So uh, I drilled a hole in the cover here, and I just mounted the hose on here, and that makes, I think, for uh, much better airflow than through here, and that's plugged up now. And I know people will ask, why two dust collectors like that? Well, that way, they're both always hooked up to the dedicated sanders and they come on automatically, so I don't ever have to mess with blast gates or think about anything. I just uh, switch on the sander, and the dust collector comes on automatically. 
You can see it pull the hose together from the vacuum. I originally made this table as a desk for my bedroom back in 2004. And I made it out of an old lab bench that I bought at a surplus sale. The top of it was badly burnt from uh, various lab experiments that presumably went wrong. And I couldn't plane it down enough to get past the burning, but then I just flipped the top over and the bottom side planed quite nicely. Oops, that drawer hits the tabletop. But if I move the tabletop way back, then it clears. And I totally designed this workbench with moving it with a dolly like this in mind. I have a video on that. And I think any future workbench I'll build, I'll use that same method. And I think the jointer is going to live against this wall here with the dedicated dust collector right behind it. But uh, it turned out to be awkward the way I ran the hose there. So flipping around the dust collector made it a little bit better, but uh, for where it is, it would be better if the hose went the other way on my jointer, but I'll deal with that later if I need to. So this is how I've got things arranged now. I figure I'll mostly be filming this way because looking this way, it's quite messy. And I figure I should uh, put my big table saw somewhere around here. It's still back here, exactly where the movers plopped it, except uh, when they put it down, it was surrounded by boxes. And the ping pong table is actually an excellent junk catcher. It's just not very sturdy. So I think I'll keep that ping pong table here, but maybe move it more this way to get it more out of view for when I'm filming. And I've been experimenting with uh, using this infrared heater aimed at where I'm working. And that's actually worked uh, quite well. Uh, raises the temperature at least that it feels like by quite a bit without actually heating up the whole room. So I think that will be a topic for another short video. But uh, I think that's all for this update video for now.